A special episode with a special guest, also with Fabrizio Romano. Uh, Fabrizio, it's always a pleasure to have you on, and if nothing better, to have the most reputable transfer expert on. First of all, Fabrizio, thank you for joining. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you. It's always a pleasure to be here together, and congrats for all the great work you're doing on the podcast. I always follow you, and so thanks again for the invitation. That's a very kind word. We appreciate that, and obviously follow you as well. Let's go right into it, Fabrizio. What is the status with Jude Bellingham? Uh, it's going to be, uh, I think, another crazy race after the, the Haaland story we had uh, during summer 2021 and then uh, 22 uh, when he moved to Manchester City. I think it's going to happen something similar with many, many clubs uh, around Jude Bellingham. Many of them are already exploring the situation. Uh, of course, I have to mention English clubs because English clubs, of course, will be there. And so it will be for sure, Manchester City, they need an important midfielder. Liverpool will be there. Liverpool wanted to sign a top midfielder this summer and they tried with uh, Jude Bellingham. It was impossible. They tried with Aurelien Chouameni, with Jurgen Klopp calling the player multiple times, but it was impossible because he decided to join Real Madrid. And so they decided to save some money for an important midfielder in summer uh, 2023. And so this is why Bellingham is also on Liverpool list. I will keep an eye on Chelsea till the end because Chelsea are always ready on the market with Todd Bolly. Uh, who is trying many, many signings. And so it's normal to consider Chelsea into this, uh, into this race. Also because uh, we spent the whole summer to mention Manchester United and Frankie de Jong, but Chelsea were there for Frankie de Jong. Chelsea were absolutely intentioned to proceed for Frankie de Jong and then the player never changed his mind, but they want a midfielder. And so Jude Bellingham could be one of the players in their, in their list. And then I think we have to mention also Real Madrid because Real Madrid have a lot of money to invest in the market. They are very good, as we know, on the market with their strategy. And they have Toni Kroos and Luka Modric, who are two fantastic players, but in the final part of their career. And so Jude Bellingham is a player that they absolutely want. So it's going to be a crazy race, I think. Nothing will be decided now, but it's going to be really interesting because we have a big competition. And then we don't have to forget about Borussia Dortmund, because I think till the end, they will try to keep the player for one more season. What are the chances he will stay at Dortmund? He's got two years left of his contract, correct? So if they are going to command a fee, and which you've discussed before, commanding one of the highest transfer fees ever, at least for a midfielder, what are the chances that he might consider staying? I think it's not going to be easy. Yeah? I think it's not going to be easy because when you have this kind of giants around the player, it's not going to be easy. What I'm sure is that Borussia Dortmund will try. Uh, we also had the feeling uh, many journalists, and not only journalists, also directors in uh, in Europe in summer 2021 that Herling Galland was going to leave Borussia Dortmund and then they were able to convince the player to stay for one more season and then to sell him uh, this summer. It also happened with Jadon Sancho. We remember the whole uh, COVID summer we spent uh, speaking of Sancho and Manchester the United and then they were really strong on their position and they sold him one year later. So they're very good with the strategy and they will try till the end. In this case, I think there are really so many top clubs. We mentioned Real Madrid, Manchester City, Liverpool, Chelsea and maybe others. So it's going to be a crazy, crazy race. And so I think the chances are, are not so much, but I'm sure that they will try. They will try and nothing will be decided now also on player side because it's normal for him to be focused on Borussia Dortmund and on the World Cup, of course. I think the World Cup is going to be a really important point for him to understand uh, also for the clubs what they want to do, how they want to act, how much they want to pay for him. And so there are many factors and the World Cup will be really important. Dan, do you want to chime in? Yeah, well, first of all, Fabrice, it's great to have you on as, as always and to uh, pick your brains on, on this uh, transfer. What, what we've got to know about Jude Bellingham, that I think that the race will be even crazier than Haaland because with Haaland, with Erling Haaland, we knew the price. There was a clause in the contract, so we knew the price. So this is going to be a bidding war. That is point number one. Point number two, I think that uh, our listeners or, or, or see, uh, viewers should notice is that Jude Bellingham, when he came from Birmingham, he was doing the round also in Germany. He was a guest for Bayern Munich at the Cup final. They gave him the medal <laughs> over his head and he said, this is what you can give you at Bayern. 
Why do I mention that? It's because he chose to go to Dortmund because he had seen the road of Jadon Sancho. He saw that Jadon Sancho went there, turned into a great player, so then went to Manchester United. So I don't want people to underestimate that thing when it comes to uh, transfers. And Fabrizio knows that he talked with agents, directors and everybody in the football branch. They know that could be so much planning, so much money, because on, on this level, the, the money are enormous anyway. So there can be small things and decide what what you you will do C can you have a friend in one club can you have someone doing the road for him as he did with with sancho that is a, is a point and i will also say uh, before it's much more interesting to listen to fabrizio but i will always say that that jude bellingham this season has taken steps he is the captain of borussia dortmund he as i see him i, I more or less see all dortmund games uh, in highlights or, or live and he's progressing all the time. He can play six, he can play eight, he can play ten. He scored goals. This this weekend, he scored two goals for Dortmund. He's taking responsibility. And this, he's just a kid. So I think that this, this player got, just going to be the most wanted player of them all. And then at the end, Marcus, I will also say, this is the, he is a great lad. I mean, from attitude, he is polite. He is very, very likable. So the club that will, will get him, will be uh, very lucky. But, as you were saying, the chances he could stay at Dortmund because Dortmund would be very good to him. I remember I was in Napoli when he played in Champions League and he was suddenly in the starting eleven. He didn't play very well in that game. But before the game, I asked Sork, uh, why are you playing with a kid in, in the starting lineup in the, in the first Champions League game? And he said, because we promised him to do that. And that is a, a bit key to, the, to Dortmund and also a key to the development of, uh, of Jude Bellingham. I think it's a very important point also because uh, you mentioned Bayern, but I was speaking to Fabio Paratici a few months ago, now he's Tottenham director, and he told me we had Jude Bellingham in trial with Juventus too. He was yeah. with Juventus when he was a kid, and they were really surprised when he decided to go to, to Borussia Dortmund over Juventus. But as you mentioned, they are really good in this kind of project strategy is something that other kind of top clubs can't offer, like Juventus. Maybe the player will go to other clubs on loan or to the second team. And so this makes a difference and it's going to make the difference on his decision, the project on him, as you mentioned. What will guide the overall decision-making for a club? We ran through different clubs, a Real Madrid, a Chelsea, a Liverpool. Similar that to when you spoke to Holland, they had a, a, a measurement system, a nine, a 10. They had needed a striker. They didn't need... What do you think will, will guide this decision for a type like Bellingham? And that's a question for, for the both of you. My personal opinion is that it's going to be... First of all, I think the point that, um, that Jan touched was really important. It's going to be also a bidding war. So in the Haaland case, you only had to negotiate with Erling. In this case, you had to negotiate with Borussia Dortmund. So it's about how much you're going to pay, what kind of payment terms you can offer. For example, Chelsea this summer had the opportunity to sign important players also because they offered kind of crazy payment terms in a positive way. They paid like 60%, 70% of the, of the fee immediately or in one or two years. And this is something that we can't say in modern football. So there are many points in the negotiation with Borussia Dortmund. And then on player side, as you mentioned, is gonna be is gonna be really important. I think the project around him, of course, uh, the opportunity to play. He wants to play regularly. And this is something that not all the top clubs can offer. So it's gonna be a really, really important point. And then I think it will be really smart. So I see a lot of rumors now, but he knows mm, that now is not the moment to decide. Uh, it's, not, it's not smart to decide in October, in November, when you have a World Cup during the season. It will be something to be decided in 2023, I think February, March, April, as Erling did. So I think it will be a similar process, but including the club. And so it's going to be a longer negotiation. I'm not sure that it will be over in May, as it happened with, uh, with Erling Haaland. It could be different with timing, but I'm sure that it will be a crazy, crazy bidding war between many, many top clubs. And sometimes w when you see club being ahead that remind that when when media or uh, football pundits will say that a club is ahead it just remind me a bit of in the french open when there is a cyclist <laughs> going two minutes a lead and the rest of the gang 
pack. They know they will catch him anyway, so they don't. They they they, they just relax. So Jude Bellingham at the moment been most linked to Liverpool and Real Madrid, but I I think that is just obvious reasons. Uh, I don't read anything into to that. I think that. Uh, uh, Jude Bellingham and his team, he, he got also a good team around him. They have learned a lot from Team Haaland in the way they will, will analyse the options they're having. And as Fabrizio saying, that will take time because that take time. The bidding war is nothing they can do about it, but they can kind of, in, in, in March or whatever, they can say, well, these are our preferred club that we go to. But I think that this system that uh, um, Erling and his dad had on clubs, this will come more and more. And remember, Erling and Jude Bellingham are good friends. They know about each other's uh, thoughts and then they, they talk as footballers do in, in, in all generations. So, so I think I, I agree with Fabrizio. This will, will take time and it will be even crazier. In terms of money then, which is the, you know, money talks, um, how much are we talking for Brizio? Could you combine the highest transfer fee ever, ever for a midfielder? And with that, which you can be the second part is, there will be some clubs that I would assume naturally would be priced out of something this of this magnitude. I think between the clubs we mentioned, no. I think all these clubs will be prepared to pay. So it depends also, as I mentioned, the payment terms, the add-ons. There are many details in a fee now in, in football. It's not, it's not that easy. So many of them can offer different kind of payment terms or different kind of add-ons, easy add-ons, difficult add-ons. Then when you sign this kind of player, it's also easier to include add-ons because you can mention the Ballon d'Or, you can mention the Champions League, you can mention many things in this kind of contracts. It's not a normal player. So including add-ons is something that I'm sure that will be, that will be made. And also um, about the fee, I'm sure that he will be the most paid midfielder ever. I'm almost sure then. I'm not, I'm not paying for him, but for sure there are, there are many chances for him to be the most paid midfielder in the, in the history. And I think the price tag will depend also on the World Cup. Because I think if Bellingham will perform at top level, also in the, in the World Cup with, uh, with England, it could also be something close to 120, 30 million euros, something like that. So I'm sure that it will be more than 100 million euros. But it could be more in sense of 120, 30, 40, who knows? Maybe imagine England win the World Cup and Jude Bellingham is scoring, for example, two goals during the World Cup. It could be a really crazy, crazy price tag. And he's already around 100 million euros, I think. There are clubs prepared to pay 100 million euros for Bellingham. I'm sure about that. And so I'm curious to see what happens after the World Cup. And, and it's interesting as interesting as well the position Jude Bellingham is in because sometimes we compared apple with the oranges because uh, when when for example with uh, Erling Haaland his package was compared with Lukaku's uh, well Erling is like 24 25 when he may be on the move again so he they can reinvest that money they will get some of that uh, money back which is interesting to see i will put into the mixtures i will also put into the mixture that Jude Bellingham is english we should not underestimate that he is English and he maybe that preferred to go back to his home country where he has his friends and so on. Uh, and the third thing I think is not also underestimated. Somehow you feel, I think every football player in the world have a dream to play for Real Madrid because Real Madrid is the holy grail of football. They're winning Champions League, fantastic culture, but it's all depending in which order. When do you go to Real Madrid? Because I think there is a feeling when you go to Real Madrid, that is the end station, you know? Where do you go after that? So I think that we should just put that into our analysis because we saw that with, with Erling. We, we can see that with Jude Bellingham as well, thinking that I want to go to the Premier League because Premier League at the moment attract the best players in the world, uh, the best managers of the world, the most broadcasted league in the world, the global audience uh, in the world. So I think that we should put that into the mixture of analysis as well. And as we come to the end of this of this very efficient chat <laughs> we're talking about you know monumental fees here and we are all fans of Bellingham but just try to explain maybe for those who don't understand why a player like this commands such a fee what is it that makes Bellingham so special that generational talent that people will uh, insist on we can start with you Fabrizio He's 19. He's 19 and he's a fantastic player ready to perform at top level, but not now. Uh, he's been a fantastic player ready for two years. And this is incredible. And he's 19, born in 2003. It's impressive. Uh, I live in Italy. I follow Italian football. And when there is a player now, eh, today, on the pitch, born in 2001 or 2002, they say, wow, we have a young player on the pitch. And it's Italy. And it's an important country. It's Serie A. Mm -hmm. Imagine that this boy is performing at top level since two years and he's still 19. 
And uh, as Jan mentioned, he's scoring goals. This season he is on eight goals, four goals in Champions League. It's a lot of goals for a midfielder. He can play in different positions. As he mentioned, he's a smart guy. And this is something important in modern football today because we can have big talents, but then they create some problems. This is not the case with Jude Bellingham. He's a guarantee, I think. Who's going to sign this player knows that this money are well invested. It was like this with Erling Haaland. And this is the new generation of football players. He's the perfect midfielder, the perfect guy. He's scoring goals. He's still super young. And so I think it's absolutely deserved for him to have this kind of price tag and a crazy salary in the future because he deserves. It means that he's doing something special. And it's the pitch speaking. It's not us as journalists or agents or directors. It's the pitch, and when it's the pitch, and when you, you have this kind of numbers, it's absolutely right to have this kind of price tag. And, and I would just say what at the end, Marcus, uh, because Fabrizio is uh, having a very busy day, which we understand. Where <laughs> really, we that's not normal for him, is it? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> with his knowledge, that is not a surprise. But I just want to say to the end, because of the time scale here, is quite important because these deals are so big not only in money, but it's also in politics. I've tried on Twitter to explain that because I said, uh, and Fabrizio, we discussed it as well with Mbappé, when how could a Qatari club, PSG, lose a player when the Qatari World Cup is coming up? All these kind of things. There's so many things going into that. Uh, how, how, when Mbappé, how long could we keep and can we sell him after the World Cup and so on and so on. So... Sometimes back in my days when I played football, you had a manager calling another manager and somehow they agreed a fee. I'm not saying that was the right thing to do it, but now the deals are done. This is like BMW selling shares to another company. This And, and um, remember, remember, this is competitors. Dortmund, if they sell him, they can manage to keep him because they decide. But there is a dynamic to it. When the best clubs in the world start bidding for one of your players, it's hard to keep on to, to a player. So uh, uh, I think Fabrizio won't be uh, unemployed coming in the next, uh, the next half a year. <laughs> we hope. We hope. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you a lot to, to both of you um, for a Jude Bellingham special. Thank you, Fabrizio, for providing us with the insight. Thank Thanks, Dad. We will be back also Pleasure. with the German Football Podcast Roundup for now. Um, I'll let you guys go to your busy days and then um, <laughs> we will reconvene at a later point, I imagine. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thanks for watching and please subscribe. And if you have any comments, any issues, themes that you want us to discuss, give us a comment and we always reply to that. And uh, if you know something that we don't know, which you probably do, just give us a shout.